Hello and welcome to Orange County United Way's 2021 Scorecard Events Series. My name is Steve Cherm, Chair of the Board of Directors, and it's my pleasure to kick off our three-part series. It's hard to believe that it's been more than a year since our lives, as we have always known it, screeched to a halt due to COVID-19 pandemic. As more vaccines are administered and we adjust to our new daily routines, we thank you for your continued involvement on the home team and support of Orange County United Way in helping our students from disadvantaged backgrounds succeed, our struggling families gain financial security, and our homeless neighbors find a place to call home. As you may know, our annual scorecard event is a report on Orange County's progress and challenges in achieving the 10-year goals by 2024 in the fields of education, health, income, and housing. We join hands with the public and private sectors to address the enormous needs confronting our communities through our three key initiatives, United to End Homelessness, United for Financial Security, and United for Student Success. For each of our goals, needs were identified, assessments completed, strategies developed, plans implemented, partners engaged, programs designed and executed, gaps filled, funds raised, investments made, results measured, progress communicated, and adjustments coordinated. We enthusiastically embrace our leadership role in igniting social responsibility passion and bringing together the expertise to improve lives and make Orange County stronger. In short, we're playing on these fields and won't stop until we get wins in education and health, financial stability, and housing for every single person in Orange County. Before we start with today's focus on United to End Homelessness initiative, I'd like to turn to my friend and collaborator, Sue Parks, President and CEO of Orange County United Way, to talk about the remarkable work United Way has been able to achieve through our pandemic relief efforts. Sue, the moment is yours. Thanks so much, Steve. It's so great to see you today in person at an appropriate social distance. First, I'd like to do a big shout out and thank you to our amazing sponsors. Today's presenting sponsor, our United to End Homelessness Leadership Council, not only are you an integral part of helping us reach our FACE 2024 2.0 goals through your guidance, you also made this event possible. Our investor sponsors, Eaton Aerospace, Bill Rookledge of Gibson Dunn, and J.P. Morgan Chase. Our impactor sponsors, Kenobi Martins and UCI, Sue and Bill Gross School of Nursing. And last but not least, our advocate sponsor, Insperity. We couldn't share this work without your support. Again, thank you so much. Orange County faced unparalleled challenges in 2020 and the impact is still being felt across the county. Last March, with the onset of the pandemic, we sprang into action to help our neighbors and frontline workers who were immediately impacted by the pandemic. We helped nearly 8,000 households with $500 emergency debit cards for food, for rent, utilities, and other basic needs. In addition, we've provided food assistance for our community's most vulnerable, books for children from low-income families, technology support for high school students, masks and other PPE, and so much more. And we couldn't have done it alone. Thank you to the many companies, foundations, and families for rising to the occasion and showing up for those who need us the most. Now let me introduce you to Bex Hayho, Executive Director of United to End Homelessness and her team. They'll share an update on our progress towards our FACE 2024 housing goal, which is to end homelessness by achieving functional zero within targeted populations. Take it away, Bex. Thanks, Sue. Hello, everyone. It's my honor to lead this initiative and provide an update on our efforts so far. The United to End Homelessness initiative, empowered by Orange County United Way, was launched in 2018 with the goal of working to end homelessness in OC so everyone has a place to call home. 
We convene our community's top business, philanthropic, governmental, faith-based, and nonprofit leaders to tackle this challenge head on. We have over 100 leaders participating in our work, from our leadership council to our faith leaders council, our service provider partners, and our funding partners. Each of you has been instrumental in making strides to enact long-term proven solutions to ending homelessness in Orange County. This year has brought with it more challenges than we ever could have imagined. Chief among them is a global pandemic that has led to an alarming and still growing number of deaths, millions of lost jobs, damaged livelihoods, reductions in income, and so many households on the verge of homelessness. While Orange County appropriately remains hyper-focused on the COVID-19 health crisis, we can't forget about our most vulnerable population. Our homeless neighbors, who are not only living on the streets, but as we saw last year, are also dying on our streets in growing and troubling numbers. As a community, we must press forward with our work of ending homelessness by providing cost-effective, dignified, proven solutions. Our initiative has three main areas of focus. First, public awareness and education, notably through our Homelessness 101 classes and campaigns like Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. Second, Housing Champions, which is our advocacy program for long-term solutions to end homelessness in Orange County. And third, what has turned out to be our signature effort, Welcome Home OC our program working with property owners, public housing authorities, and service provider partners to ensure that people who are homeless with a rental assistance voucher in hand can find a new home and be supported to stay there. To kick us off, I'd like to introduce you to our team member, Addie, who will share more on our public awareness and education work. Hi, my name is Addie McClellan, and I'm the Community Engagement Manager for United to End Homelessness. A big component of my work is changing the hearts and minds of the members of our community and engaging them to help end homelessness in OC. And we do that through classes, social media campaigns, and our new community chats. This past year, more than 550 people attended our Homelessness 101 virtual info sessions to dispel the myths and misconceptions surrounding homelessness. And more than 6,000 residents attended our various speaking engagements. Every November during the National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, we work with our supporters and service provider partners to organize a comprehensive campaign that covers multiple topics across the spectrum to engage the public. These include timely discussions, videos, social media posts, and the Unsung Hero Recognition event to thank our service provider partners for their tireless efforts in ending homelessness. Lastly, we introduce community chats, which are regular Facebook Live sessions that offer an opportunity for the public to hear from subject matter experts on various topics ranging from ending homelessness during a pandemic to family homelessness. Since we started the series in June, the chats have been viewed by more than 4,600 people. If you haven't already, follow us or like us on social media to get updates on upcoming events. Now, let's welcome Michelle Murphy, Director of Public Affairs, to talk about our Housing Champions Advocacy Program. Good morning. It's my pleasure to share an update on our efforts to promote effective housing advocacy and train OC residents to become powerful voices of public meetings for more supportive and affordable housing developments in their cities. Last year, we fully launched our Housing Champions Advocacy Network, and we've trained 130 housing champions. These champions jumped in, hit the ground running, and remarkably, every new supportive housing development that we have advocated for together and with our partners has passed City Council approval. Recently, affordable and supportive housing developments in Lake Forest, Buena Park, and Placentia, among many others, were approved by their respective city councils. Together, these three developments will bring 202 affordable housing units to our community, including 41 units of permanent supportive housing. We would love to have you join us in these efforts. Please text CHAMP, C-H-A-M-P, to 50503 to get more information on how to become a housing champion yourself. To round out United to End Homelessness efforts, please welcome Christine to talk about our Welcome Home OC program. Thanks, Michelle. I'm Christine Peters, Welcome Home OC program director. In the second year of the Welcome Home OC program, we continued to build on our success to house individuals experiencing homelessness by placing them in available units owned by landlords in our network. 
These property owners receive financial incentives such as security deposits and other assurances, so it's a win-win situation for all those involved. So far, we've housed more than 300 individuals and we have more than 65 property owners in our network. In the face of the pandemic, our team hasn't slowed down. In fact, it's been a big motivator to help our homeless neighbors have a safe place to call home. And I'm proud to say that our program was recognized nationally by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development as a best practice program. It's also endorsed by the California Apartment Association and the Apartment Association of Orange County. If you're a property owner looking to make a difference, I encourage you to come learn about how you can benefit from our Welcome Home OC program. Attend one of our workshops and spread the word. Bex, turning it back to you. Thank you, team. You inspire me every day with your countless hours and dedication to the cause. It truly is a team effort. Data from the last point in time count indicated that 6,860 people were without a home in Orange County. And of those, close to 4,000 were unsheltered. Due to the pandemic, a complete point in time count wasn't able to be done this year. While data on how many people experienced homelessness this last year may not be available, we do know that 37 agencies provided crucial services under incredibly challenging circumstances and helped thousands of people end their homelessness last year, including those we partner with on our Welcome Home OC program. Next, I would like to share with you some testimonials from people who've experienced homelessness firsthand and now have a place to call home thanks to our Welcome Home OC program. Home has always been a sanctuary, a place to rest and recover. It's a vital basic need that serves as the foundation for one's health, stability, safety, and dignity. Now more than ever, home has taken on a deeper meaning. With close to 7,000 people currently without a home in our community, and more expected as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the time to act is now. A home is essential to end homelessness. When I was homeless, I felt invisible to everyone, and I stopped caring about what people thought of me. A home changed that. Having my home motivates me to be the best version of myself. It allows me to be whatever I want to be in life, and that alone makes me feel overwhelmed with joy. When I was homeless, I became very depressed on top of all the physical ailments I suffered from. Now that I have a home, I can focus on more important things like my health. I'm thankful I will no longer have to worry about where I sleep for the night or where my next meal will be coming from. Having a place of my own has changed my whole life around. Now I can focus on my health and taking care of myself. I finally feel safe now in my new home. It's a place of healing for me and my two kids. There's no price you can put on having stability. Homelessness ends with a home. As we've said time and time again, the solution to homelessness is a home. And with the onset of COVID-19, having a home has become even more essential. Next up is our panel segment where experts in the housing sector speak on the importance of collaboration in ending homelessness. Here to moderate our panel, featuring members of our Leadership Council, is Larry Armstrong, our chair. Take it away, Larry. Thank you, Bex. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Armstrong, chair of the United to End Homelessness Leadership Council. It's my pleasure to be here today to have a quick conversation with two of our fellow partners on addressing homelessness. I'm excited to be joined by Jason Austin, Director of Care Coordination at Orange County Health Care Agency, and Lori Udit, Field Office Director at HUD, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in Los Angeles. We all serve together on the United and Homelessness Leadership Council. Jason and Lori, thank you for joining us today and for your collaborative efforts. Thanks, Larry. Happy to be here. Thanks, yes. This has been a really challenging year for everyone. Can you help those who have tuned in understand what some of the ways were that the homeless sector had to pivot this year in response to the COVID crisis? Lori, we'll start with you. Yes, well, we know that the pandemic has exacerbated our nation's already severe housing crisis. And it's reinforced the need for enhanced cooperation between public health authorities, homeless service systems, and all of the other partners at the local level. Uh, so in the past year, here are just some of the ways that the sectors had to adjust. The 
the homeless service providers had to, of course, adjust their operations to follow the latest CDC guidance. And homeless services were designated as essential critical infrastructure, which importantly then enabled service providers to source personal protective equipment more readily. And it encouraged local authorities then to keep homelessness service providers open. Uh, recognizing then that the people who are homeless are a particularly vulnerable group, service providers across the country worked to identify non-congregate settings where those at increased risk could stay, uh, providing a way then for, for those individuals who do not have a home to stay inside and help protect them from COVID-19. And from, from the HUD perspective, with the massive infusions of CARES Act Homeless Emergency Solution Grant Funds, many continuums of care have had the opportunity to strengthen their relationship with local governments to help them effectively use those funds to address the needs of at-risk populations. In many cases, those grantees received anywhere from three to eight times their normal allocation. And so while HUD's made every effort to provide flexibilities with those funds, the continuums of care have had to pivot frequently to manage their programs under a number of new program policies. And of course, then the work continues. The, the current focus is promoting vaccination initiatives within the community while also continuing to mitigate COVID-19. Uh, this pandemic, really has required a new level of partnership with public health and uh, people experiencing homelessness need access to testing and vaccines and there are basic challenges of access to vaccine response systems and care that's great thank you for those insights laurie well jason what about at the county level how, is, how have you had to pivot in your agency and collaborations sure thanks larry um, I think I can pick it up from, from where Lori left off in that uh, the county response to COVID has been, um, I believe we're at our one year mark right now. Um, and we have uh, all, I think, been working very hard to promote programs and services in new creative and innovative ways, because it's really our job to focus on how do we promote the idea of isolation, quarantine service for individuals and families who are experiencing both homelessness and who are impacted by COVID. Um, so here in the County of Orange, we brought up several programs very quickly uh, about one year ago to really focus on impacting the most vulnerable among our homeless community. To start with, uh, we had brought up uh, what was called Project Room Key. Uh, the idea behind it was to lease entire motel sites, uh, bring on providers and engage the uh, individuals uh, experiencing homelessness who are both sheltered and unsheltered um, in a very, very fast manner so that we could provide that opportunity to isolate both for those who are say sick, symptomatic or COVID positive, um, and also for those who are the most vulnerable age 65 and older or with medical conditions that puts them at higher risk. So our job initially was to um, really reach out create those very fast partnerships um, with both motel owners, the community, cities, and uh, homeless individuals, both uh, sheltered and unsheltered. And so as with anything that we have to ramp up quickly, there's always gonna be uh, complications, but I believe this county has really acted in uh, uh, quickly, efficiently, and passionately in caring for individuals uh, most at need. Um, from there, we, uh, as soon as we ramp these programs up, we're thinking, okay, this is an opportunity. How do we use this to then create steps to actual housing um, from these uh, motel sites? So here in the County of Orange, we created a program called Project Tool Belt, looking at using every housing tool in our tool belt to engage those individuals, both from streets and shelters who are the most vulnerable and continue them along that housing journey. Um, at this point, I believe we have somewhere around uh, 224 individuals housed from Project Room Key, which is amazing. They have moved on to permanent housing options. We have created relationships um, and in enhanced existing relationships with uh, housing authorities and cities um, and the individuals that we're partnering, partnering with 
to uh, look at housing options. And so that's been a very successful program and we continue that program. Um, finally, our project Home Key program, where we had the opportunity to purchase some of our sites or uh, viable option sites that could be converted to permanent supportive housing down the road. Here in uh, Orange County, we were able to purchase two motel sites. They are both uh, already in operation as interim housing programs and will eventually be converted to permanent supportive housing uh, in a few years. So our opportunity here was um, to really make lemonade out of lemons and to really move things forward in a way that involved everybody. This is about partnership. It's about engaging everyone, bringing everyone to the table and looking at ways we can ultimately create more housing opportunities for individuals uh, in their housing journey. Fantastic, thank you, Jason. Those are amazing and very effective programs. Appreciate that. As I mentioned before, we are connected on the United and Homelessness Leadership Council along with 67 other local leaders from a wide variety of sectors. I'll start with you this time, Jason. What do you think are the strengths of the United to End Homelessness initiative? I can say emphatically, the strength of the initiative is really about bringing everyone to the table. Everyone comes with their own perspective, their own voice, their own distinctive journey. And to have that kind of opportunity where people can talk, really think creatively, and to be able to voice that, uh, that innovation in a way that's uh, treated with respect and thoughtfulness, um, that initiative really allows that opportunity for us all here in this county to, to really talk about how do we take things to the next step? How do we be creative? And how do we move things forward in a way that's really effective? And I think the initiative has really allowed that opportunity for all of us to have a seat at the table, no matter who we are, um, to really engage the discussion about ending homelessness, promoting um, outreach, promoting engagement of individuals experiencing homelessness, and coming up with options that are really going to be um, thoughtful, respectful, and creative. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Laurie, how about you? What do you think about the United and Homelessness Program and your experience with it? Yeah, I agree with everything that Jason just shared. The other, uh, the other pieces that I'll add uh, in terms of just being being part of this initiative that I really appreciate are again that, that collaborative perspective, the collaborative approach. Uh, uh, working towards a, a clear shared collective goal of creating long-term supportive housing for those most in need in Orange County. And then the other thing that I would add as a key strength of this, of this initiative is the, the focus on data, uh, looking at the real numbers, tracking progress on an ongoing basis. Uh, that's really allowed the initiative then to focus on efforts that are working while also identifying things that are not working as well and, and making adjustments to get better in those areas. Fantastic. Well, Jason, you, you mentioned uh, wel our Welcome Home OC program. Um, the county helped us to launch this program, and it, I think we all agree it's, it, we're making great progress with it. Could you share a little bit about that program and some of the ways we've partnered together with the county uh, to make that sure. work? Happy to, Larry. I think it's been a really fantastic example of um, how to bring uh, different agencies and um, different levels of counties or cities, as well as nonprofits together to really make an impact in a creative and innovative way. Um, the idea of Welcome Home OC is, is really about reaching out to landlords, but also providing those supportive services, that idea of housing navigation, um, case management, and really focusing on what do we just need to do here to get it done? How do we reach out to all parties involved in the idea of housing an individual um, or a family? Let's get everyone together, work this out, and show that it can be a positive process for everyone, including the landlords themselves, so that they go out and then tell other maybe landlord friends or people in the community, hey, actually, this wasn't so bad. And look, we can help people do our thing. Um, still operate our business in the way that we choose to, but we can also be involved in the community in a different way. And I think that's the real power of Welcome Home OC, that um, United Way really has that strong understanding of how to connect to people, whether they're homeless, whether they're landlords or business owners, 
um, city individuals or representatives. It's really about just making those kinds of connections, reaching out, following through on everything and collecting data to show the impact of what you've been able to accomplish um, with that, that overall program setup. And I think it's very powerful and it can be a real model moving forward on a lot of different levels. Awesome, thanks Jason, appreciate your perspective. Lori, from the HUD uh, kind of perspective uh, and vantage point, how do you see the Welcome Home OC program? Yeah, so I'll start by just sharing HUD's mission, which is to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities and quality affordable homes for all. And so in carrying out that mission, we partner with and then rely on individuals and organizations in local communities to put the HUD funding into action. And so the Welcome Home OC program is a prime example of, as Jason shared, an effective local and innovative program uh, that has truly increased the number of avail available affordable rental units that's ultimately then housed more people in Orange County. And so to that end, it's been a really exciting program um, and certainly one that, that HUD supports. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Thanks, Lori. Well, Lori and Jason, we wanna thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today and for all you are doing to end homelessness in Orange County. Amazing things happen when we collaborate and we work together and we will continue our important work this year because everyone has the right to a safe and stable home. Now back to you, Steve. Thank you, Larry. And thank you to our esteemed panel, Bex and the United to End Homelessness team. This life-changing initiative continues to make such a huge impact. Together, we can end homelessness and housing instability in Orange County. But none of this groundbreaking work would be possible without our United in Philanthropy partners who support the work of Orange County United Way through our three key initiatives, United to End Homelessness, United for Financial Security, and United for Student Success. Join me in celebrating all of our United to End Homelessness donors listed on your screen who give to our work at the $5,000 level or higher. Wow, we've covered so much in just 30 short minutes in the area of housing. If you haven't already, follow United 10 Homelessness on social media, check out upcoming events, and text CHAMP to 50503 to see how you can get involved as a housing champion. I can't wait to share about the progress made in United Way's other fields of work. Join us same time next week as we dive into the efforts of United for Student Success. And remember, Orange County is stronger when we're united as we navigate the economic, racial, and social challenges confronting our community. We know we can overcome them together with humanity. Let's show that humanity starts here.